what's going on, everybody? How's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know who it is. This is Kevin from the Cold Progression Podcast. Brought to you TV Rocks. We're rocking and thrive. Happy, happy Tuesday to you all. It is June 8th, and I'm using my radio voice for this one. Yes, apparently, Justin DeBleek from My Sign Kills and, well, formerly My Sign Kills, things have a great radio voice, and I'm going to keep going with it. So, today's episode, if you haven't heard of the band Lydia Can't Breathe, you are definitely missing out because, my lord, is this band hilarious to get into. Plus, they also make kick-ass music as well. Well, this podcast is chock full of just absolutely intense and crazy as all hell stories where the guys talk about a bunch of different tour stories that involve poop and roasting one another at any given moment. And it just shows how incredibly close this band is and how much fun that they have and that they're just not taking life too seriously. They're just enjoying the moment and it is fantastic. We do get a little bit in depth with their song Sheep about the concept behind it and especially even though it was written right before the pandemic, how it relates perfectly to everything we've gone through since March of 2020. And, well, I make these guys a promise that is the absolute shit. Trust me on this. You're going to want to wait till the end when I make this promise because it is intense. But it's awesome. Are you guys ready to get to know Lydia Can't Breathe in the funniest way possible? Oh, this is one of my favorite podcasts ever. Now let's go! Yeah! Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Core Progression Podcast, I have to thank Ms. Sean O'Donnell for this one because she's been sending me a lot of incredible bands lately. And let me tell you that this one is not an exception to the rule. This band is rather incredible, if I do say so myself. They have released two singles so far in 2021 called Ups and Downs and Sheep. And let me tell you, it looks like the second half of 2021 is going to be even better for these guys. So please welcome the gentleman from the band, Lydia Can't Breathe. So guys... Welcome to Core Progression Podcast. Yay! Thank you for the kind words. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. How's everything going in the state of Florida at this day and age at the moment? It's hot. It's, yeah, it's pretty it's good. Pretty it's a, it is a little hot, actually, but I mean, I like it. You know what I mean? I hate the cold. Ryan would appreciate the cold because he works outside in the heat. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Shad's from up north and stuff, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. Got that Mountain West blood, you know what I mean? It's hot Under- down there. Uh, understandable i'll say when we're shooting this you guys should come up here i think today the high was maybe 52 degrees yeah it sounds outside, it's terrible nice. it sounds terrible <laughs> is oh, it it's snowing and shit or no, no dude that, it's like yeah. that's way too warm <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, well that it, was the high what was the low you know what i mean there could have been a low uh, right the low when i went to work this morning i think was maybe 36 Boom, it was close. Uh, it was, it was close. getting close. Was I don't close. sound so dumb now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. still what about <laughs> it, it's it's you get what you get because I mean that when it comes to May here in Wisconsin, it, it, it is all over the place. At the beginning of the month, the first weekend, I swear the first day of May it was 85 degrees outside. I ended up biking from where I live all the way to downtown Milwaukee on the like the lakefront of Lake Michigan just because I was bored and it was a fun idea. But uh <laughs> If I did that uh, the previous weekend, yeah, I ended up biking for a little bit, but I needed to wear gloves due to the fact that it was like 50, 49 degrees outside. And when you're riding real fast and you got your hands right there, you know, kind of hands start getting a little cold. You don't yeah. want to mess with it. <laughs> so you guys are from, from, you know, further up north or from the Mountain West area. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I've been in that. Like, I've been up there. I just never rode a bike when it was cold. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I I had to. I I was riding a bike when it was like negative twenty, negative thirty outside. Because when I went to school, I went to school up in Minnesota, and I lived on a completely one other side of the campus, and I had to get to class. All my classes were on the exact opposite side of campus. So for me to walk there, it'd have been like thirty to forty minutes, maybe if I was lucky. But if I biked, I could get there in about ten. And even it, when it was snowing outside, like I was drifting around corners on my bike. <laughs> And if you looked at me, you could not tell that it was me riding because it's like I've got like the big coat on, I've got an extra sweatshirt on me, got these big thick gloves, hat on, like neck scarf that goes up to here. I've got ski goggles on my eyes, so you can't tell that it's me. It looks like this guy is prepared for like the like he's gonna go through the movie the day after tomorrow. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Good yeah, times, but crazy. as yeah, we start- care, it's like the least amount of clothes as possible. About I feel. Yeah. And wear flip flops and shorts every day, every every day of the year. <laughs> yeah, cause I, yeah. Because last time I was down in Florida was it was uh, 2019. I was down there for the Daytona 500 because it was on my dad's 60th birthday, and we took him down there. Well, 
my mom and I, my brother paid for him to go down there and I was the only one that went with him. So lucky me. And, nice. it was, and, and it, except for race day, it was maybe like a highs of, you know, 70, 75 ish. But in the morning it was 62, 63 degrees. And I'd go for a run on the beach in the morning. It felt, it was felt yeah. great. I, I ran without a shirt on and there's people walking the beach in winter coats. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> laughing the whole time. You're like, I'm yeah. fucking Rocky, dude. I'm Rocky. <laughs> I was listening to the Rocky soundtrack during one yeah, of the Yeah, you're like going hard. You're like, dun, dun, dun. you're like running in the sand and shit. You had the high socks on with like two, you know, color strips. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very sporty. Yeah. I wish I had those socks, but I'm pretty sure I just had some of those like Nike basketball socks so that the like the heels of the shoe wouldn't cut into my heel. And then all of a sudden I've got this big, you know, like skin peeling off of the back of my heel and then get sand in it. And it just, uh, that's what you get for trying to be cool. You should have just worn the, the crappy socks. That's what they're made for. <laughs> yeah, but no, oh well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I missed out on the full on Rocky moment, but I did have the soundtrack going. So I, I am good there. Uh, maybe next time you better luck <laughs> hey, i'll probably i'll be down in florida at least at some point probably in the next two to three years again so my my, my dad wants to go back to daytona for the 500 one more time at least so who oh, might yeah. say no you're buying socks when you come next time right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to remember that all right guys as we start out this podcast there's always something i like to do to get everyone that's listening to know a little bit more about you a little bit more in the know with you if they already know you that's great if not well this is the perfect way to introduce yourself so i'm going to ask each, each of you guys, three separate questions. The first two, very simple, very easy. You're going to answer them without a problem. The third one's going to put you on the spot a little bit, and it's always my favorite. So the first thing I want to know is, what is your name? The second thing I want to know is, when it comes to Lydia Can't Breathe, what do you do in the band? And then the third one is, I want to know a little fun fact, or a little fun, wacky story about yourself. Could be per- personal, it could be about the band, could be something on the road that will hopefully make me fall out of my chair laughing. It has happened a couple of times. There was a band in Florida that told me about how they chloroformed their lead singer, took him to the beach, buried him halfway in the sand, and then sprayed like a bunch of ketchup around to make it look like his legs got cut off or something. <laughs> yeah, um, crazy. I've heard stories of the hinder bassist laying his balls on fire because that is his like parlor trick. I've, yeah. I've heard of, yeah, I've heard a bunch of crazy ones, but I always I like to bring those up as like, story. yeah, yeah. I bring, I always bring those up because they're like the two ones that I just remember the most out of any of them. Right. So if you guys can beat them, I'm all for it. I think I have him beat, but it's with our drummer, but he's not here. You know what I mean? You can still use it. Yeah. yeah you can I know what you're it. talking about. It. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. All so right. You go first, Kyle. All right. You want me to, you sure? I think yeah, I'm in there. Okay. All right, I'm Kyle. Uh, I sing for the band. I also like play guitar, but uh, only like during practice. Usually, usually live, I only play like one song or something. Um, and then uh, the fun fact, I guess I didn't personally do it, but I was there and I did pay for my humor. So sometimes we'll be on tour and people will start getting a little short on money, and I like to you know drop games or something to like tell i'm like hey you know what i mean you do this today you entertain me you let me film it for social media and i'll pay you you know what i mean because i usually like try to you know stack my bread the whole tour or whatever and uh josh had partied a little too hard the whole tour our drummer and uh he was like running out of money and we went out uh (laughs) drinking for the night with uh justin uh uh cure from otep and then uh their bass player Corey. i can't i can't remember his last name but uh, we got done with the show and it was at the Dead Horse Pub or something like that in North Carolina. And uh, we went to a strip club and we got kicked out because Justin was throwing change, drunkenly throwing change <laughs> on the stage. And I was just like, dude, like you're pissing all these chicks off. And they were just like so pissed. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so we get kicked out of there. We leave. We're hammered. Like everyone's like almost blackout drunk. And uh, I... I don't like shitting at some of the venues, you know what I'm saying? Like I get there in the venues, you know what I mean? It's a nice venue, but like they don't really clean their bathroom or something. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, I'm or gonna... there's no stall door. Yeah. That happens, there was right? no stall. <laughs> yeah. They're just like, Hey, you get to shit and everyone gets to watch you. You know what I mean? So I had took a shit outside. It was like a routine. I shit outside, like almost every venue. So I shit outside <laughs> the venue and I dry. I like, I was like, yo, it looks like it's, we're just going to dry that out all fucking day. And then we'll try to fucking get somebody to fucking pick it up and write their name on the fucking wall with it. Uh, 
by the end of the night. And we talked about it and it was kind of just like a, a joke. You know what I mean? It was like an open joke, but then the alcohol and then whatever else we had been doing that night had kicked in. And Josh was like, yo, like, uh, I'll fucking write my name on the wall with shit. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? If you guys raise enough money. <laughs> so I had our merch, man. I went around and I had congregated everybody. And I was like, yo, you got like 20 on this. Like, what do you got on this? You know what I'm saying? So we stacked up, you know, a decent amount of money. And uh, basically, uh, Josh wrote his initials on the wall with my shit at the end of the at the end of the night. And uh, I used to have it on a video, but our manager made us delete it because he was like, "Yo, bro, like you can't be having like the shit video on YouTube." You know what I'm saying? So I swear to you on everything, it's a real thing. I have the video. If anyone wants to personal message me and you really want to see it, I could probably show you, but I'm not allowed to like air it out. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that was the craziest thing that I've done on tour. I had another kid write his name on the wall with shit because we had told the story. So I shit in a box in uh, Texas, in LeBuck, Texas. (laughs) And uh, we did the same thing. And we raised more money that night. And we were on tour with the guys from El Nino and all this shit. And like, some people were like, yo, that's gross. And then other people were like, nah, man, that shit's funny. Like, uh, <laughs> I'll throw down on that. So yeah, that, Charlie's watching you yeah. with your shit. <laughs> so that night, there was a different kid. Uh, his name was uh, Serge. I want to say Serge or something like that. It wasn't like Serge uh, from System or nothing like that. It's, uh, I can't remember what band he was in. He's in a different band now. He's a super cool dude. And he was like a younger cat and it was like his first tour. And I was like, yo, bro, you don't know about it. And I was like, everybody <laughs> writes their name on the wall with shit. That's like, the fucking, that's how you know you've been on the tour. And then like other dudes, you know, started, you know, jumping in on it. They're like, yeah, bro, that's what we all had to do. It. That's the fuck you, you know what I'm saying? We've all done it, man. Yeah, so that night a different kid did it. So those are the writing your name on the wall with shit was like a little thing that we, uh, we had happen shit for money. You know what I mean? So I don't know if anybody can uh, beat that. You know what I mean? no. I, I'm not sure if anyone can just because yeah. poop is funny, man. Shit is funny. It's fucking funny, dude. So good. Dude, when he picked it up, we told him like part of the rules where he had to pick it up and go to the camera. He had to go, it's poopy. <laughs> and he was so fucking, he was so drunk and laughing so hard that like when he picked it up, he couldn't say it. And then I was like, you, you like better say it. Like, if you don't say it, we don't have to pay you. And he's just sitting there with the shit in his hand. He just, he just like, it's, it's, it's poopy. And then he like wrote his name on the wall. It was the, it was the craziest thing I've ever, ever dealt with in my life, actually. And then there was no running water afterwards. Oh, no. <laughs> so we he had to wash his hands. We just conjured, we all had like, you know, cases of water because we were on tour. Mm-hmm. So everybody went and got like water bottles and we're just like <laughs> dumping it on Josh's hands. And Josh from Otep like went and got uh, soap off their bus because he was like, yo, Otep ain't going to let you come on the bus and like shit. wash shit <laughs> off your hands, bro. Like, you got to just like stay out here with that you know what I, mean? I don't even know if she knows we did that shit you know what i mean she probably <laughs> kicked off the tour i don't know again i just gotta say poop is funny and it's something that you guys are end up able to you know help raise some money off of that just it's kind of like kind of like jackass in a way yeah 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 we fed starving musicians you know what i'm saying shit sells man we've been trying to pedal music this whole time man you can just <laughs> get and sell it and raise money i could have been raising 10 grand a show or something and taking 10 percent I think I got a cut the second time we did it. I told everybody I was getting a little cut, you know what I mean? So I got a cut <laughs> the second time. I didn't even have to, all I had to do was shit in a box. And uh, these dudes were from Australia. It was Dark Cell. And they were like, uh, they were, they said something, I forget what they said. Uh, and they were like, do you, are Americans, you know, crazy? And I was like, I was like, man, we're fucking about it, dude. I was like, I'll shit in this box right now in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> and I like looked at the guy, he was on his bus and I was like looking at him in the eyes and I was like, look at me. And I shit in a box, just looking at him. And he was just like, he's like, you guys are fucking crazy, man. Like, you know what I mean? But we've been friends forever because of that. You know what I mean? Because of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like shit brings the world together, man. <laughs> shit, honestly, shit does bring the world together. I mean, take a look at how much, t- how many times South Park has used shit from Randy Marsh breaking the world record with his like 46 Keurig weight and shit. 
And of course, Mr. Hanky, the Christmas Pooh, which I was going to say, if you guys ever end up raising money and end up having me write my initials on the wall with your shit, I will also say it's poopy. But then as I'm writing it on the wall, I will sing Mr. Hanky, the Christmas Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> we will allow it. We'll still give you the money, you know? Yeah. What does he say, though? Doesn't Mr. Hanky, he's like, Hi, ho! Or something. Hi, if you can manage to digest yeah. backwards and have the turd come out of your mouth, that's oh, even that. We'll, make, we'll match whatever the donations are. Oh, you know my I mean? God. <laughs> oh, oh, God. I might need like five or six shots of tequila uh, just to contemplate yeah. it. That's epic. Yeah. Uh, and then some gin afterwards just to wash the taste out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. You'll never All right. forget. All right. Well, I'm Shad. I'm the bass player. Uh, this isn't my story, but it's another shit story. So we're going to go ahead and go with it. Um, we were uh, shooting Zebra. That's the music video from the last album that we did. And, uh, you know, we've been shooting out in this remote location all day. It's like a whole day thing. There's, there's nothing around. It's, you know, uh, at least a 20 minute trip there and back if you want to go take a shit somewhere. But Kyle being very, you know, very <laughs> comfortable with where he shits. He just decides to, you know, sit between the van and the trailer, you know, where the hitch is kind of kind of has like a toilet seat shaped area, whatever. So he's sitting there doing his business all day. Nobody's come by. But guess when somebody comes up on a four wheeler, (laughs) (laughs) two two people on a four wheeler pull up where he's taking a shit. You know, like literally, we saw maybe two other cars the yeah. rest of the entire shoot. We're in the middle of fucking nowhere. 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 <laughs> right when he's taking a shit outside, two people on a, on a, on a four wheeler, just like, "Hey, man, what you up to?" <laughs> <laughs> We're doing shit, man. You know, it's like literally I'm doing eye shit. contact. I'm always making eye contact with people when I'm shitting outside. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, the territory yeah. thing. Yeah, right? territory. This is mine. This it's is a power move right, right, right there. It's you a come power over here, Probably not. <laughs> yeah, no, you do All not right. want to come over here. I'm literally marking my territory as we <laughs> speak. <laughs> oh, good shit, good shit. All right, well, um, so we've been on several tours. I don't know how many tours has Tony been with us. Oh my god, like probably eight, eight nine, nine, eight or like nine. eight or nine tours. He's our he's our homie. He's a uh, you know kind of. Acts as like a roadie, a light guy, a sound guy. Um, he helps us out in a lot of ways. And um, so he has a really bad snoring problem. It's the most ridiculous snoring you've ever heard in your life. And it's not like just loud snoring. It's weird noises. Like, dude probably has got sleep apnea. He needs to get that checked out. But he makes these high-pitched squeals. <laughs> 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 it, it sounds like he's dying sometimes. So anyway, day off, we're on tour. We're like, let's go see what's in the movie theaters. Let's go check it out. So we go in super blazed and go and watch. I can't even remember what movie we were watching. Dude, it was epic. It was like an, it, it was, was like, like an Avengers. Uh, or something. Yeah, something yeah. crazy, like a Marvel movie. Big explosions going off. Loud, loud, loud. Cuts to quiet. <laughs> There's <laughs> Tony snoring his ass off, sleeping, sleeping <laughs> through some Avengers yeah. and the whole the whole entire theater. There wasn't yeah. a whole lot of people there, but it was like everyone was cracking up yeah, laughing. Was <laughs> he looks over at me, he's like, Hey man, was I sleeping? I was like, Oh yeah. Oh, he's yes. like, Was I loud? He's like, Oh yeah. Was it quiet? Yes, dude. It was the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. He was just like, Oh god. It was good. He was so embarrassed. It was great. It's we love a- embarrassing everybody in the band. Every chance yeah. we get, we like, we fuck with each but other. All of us in city, all day. Sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. We're, we're, like the hired guns don't know what to think, man. It's so funny. Yeah. Absolutely, you have to just have fun as a band. You have to just consistently roast. And plus, I always love hearing stories about movie theaters and people being able to crack up a movie theater at any given moment and just kind of take the movie experience and make it even better. Because I've been able to manage that <laughs> twice. It was during the premiere of The Dark Knight Rises because there's the scene where Bane's blowing up everything and they're showing right. the, the football game and the Heinz Ward is only taking a kickoff back for a touchdown. So every everything's all devastating. He runs across the, the goal line and I only jumped in my seat and yelled, Touchdown Steelers! <laughs> my, my buddy lost it completely. His girlfriend was laughing. Everyone else was laughing. And then my buddy's girlfriend's best friend was looking at me in utter disgust, like, how could you do something like this? And I'm just la- I'm just still going off on it. The other one I did was uh, I was in college. We went to go see Interstellar. 
in like November of 2014. This was right after uh, Buffalo got like six feet of snow in one night. So they're getting out of like the water plant. They're going to this like ice plant. And Matt Damon is there for some reason, but they're flying through and it's like, all Damon. covered in yeah. it's all covered in snow and ice. And I believe they're out in the theater. Hey guys, they're in Buffalo. Perfect timing. Only time I could ever pull that off. And just the theater just completely lost it. And then all of a sudden you hear a wine bottle just start rolling down the <laughs> <laughs> just, like just kicked it over. And everyone's just watching it just roll down. Luckily, it was during a point in the movie it was like establishing shot for like 30 seconds. So the laughter really kind of covered over. And then the bottle it, it, by the time it stopped, two seconds later, Matthew McConaughey starts talking, and then you get to see Matt Damon. Oh <laughs> <laughs> <Hell> yeah. <laughs> Good times. Uh, good times. All right. Well, I we, we have two fantastic stories. We got oh, one more. Can, can we, can we keep, right, the, right, can right, keep right, it rolling, man? Right, oh, Show yeah. me what you got. Show me what you got. I want to see what you got. <laughs> well, you, got <laughs> you, you better get you swifty with that story, buddy. Yeah, man. <laughs> think about more shit. You just think shit. What do you got? Well, I do have a shit story, but it was like way before the band or any of that, you know? that it, yeah. it keeps up with the Tell theme of the people story who though. are you ryan and what do you do that was the first <laughs> the first you, time I, ryan, I play guitar <laughs> um story you got two whole stories to think of a story yeah <laughs> what about the time that i cussed you out for throwing the banana oh my god you know, all right i mean there's that i mean i guess there's a time when Okay, I guess I got. I guess I got a story there you here. Go. I got, All right, let's go. Got a story. Okay, so I had I have like a skin condition, eczema or whatnot, and so I have to like eat a certain way on tour. So I bring like this rice cooker with me pretty much everywhere I go to every venue, and I, I cook in the venues and whatnot. But one night, Kyle took a shit in it. <laughs> <laughs> It's not even a really funny, crazy story, but basically he was just like, dude, you know you can hook that shit up to the, the fucking van and cook your meal and oh, shit. Oh no, I know what you're talking about. And uh <laughs> yeah, so yeah, everybody was asleep. I fucking cooked up my meal, I'm enjoying it, having a good old time, and then we wake up in the morning and I killed the battery. Just and we couldn't get anybody to fucking jump us or fucking help us. This guy's freaking out. I mean, just like a bunch of fucking weirdos. We're all dirty and shit. Chad's got a fucking green beard. And we're like, can you help us, ma'am? And no, she's like, what the fuck? I, get away from me. Like, what do these guys do? We're like, no, no, we don't want any money. We just would like it if, if uh, you would let us you know, jump our car off of your car. Like, and they were just like, it was crazy. But yeah, I try. I definitely cussed out Ryan severely after I told him he could do that. You know what I mean? And I was just like, oh, damn it. I felt terrible. But at the, in the heat of the moment, I wanted, I, to, I wanted to kill Ryan. It's not a really funny story. But That's a great story. Like it's, still, <laughs> it's still a good story, but I was just hoping that at some point someone would be driving by us. It's like, hey, can you help us? And all of a sudden they look at you and then like the like if you'd imagine Bill Burr just screaming, you're like, "Don't kill me, I have a family!" and then just driving <laughs> off as fast just as possible. That's how everybody felt. Yeah. <laughs> well, now if I ever see you guys on the road, it's like, "Hey, man, can you give us a jump?" I'm gonna look and be like, "Uh, yeah, but you're gonna need to write your names on the side of the van." If <laughs> <laughs> you write your name with shit. You All right, can't. we agree to that, but it's gotta be the drummer. Yeah, Josh. It, so. it, it, okay, I will. Agree to those terms because Josh is not here at this current moment. He, so. he will be here, I think, though. I think he'll be here shortly. Well, well if he shows up, we're going to have to have him do the introduction and tell the wacky story that I hope involves some sort of poop. And watch, he's going to tell the exact same <laughs> yeah. one that you did, Kyle. And we're going to be like, really? You're saying hates, that one? He hates that I tell people it. Like, he, <laughs> he was mad that I had it on video. He was like, yo, dude, like, you you shouldn't post that. And I was like, nah, dude, it's fucking hilarious. It's gold. Like, it's totally brown here. gold. Yeah. yeah you know, brown, gold. Across brown gold. Every bronze. Day. Bro. <laughs> it's like bronze. Brown gold. Brown's gold's better. I mean, if you still have that video, especially with how popular NFTs are becoming, you could probably sell that as an NFT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We have, we hey, leave shit again. No. I <laughs> thought I was going to get paid just from doing it. You know what I mean? I was like, dude, no one's ever done this. Like, we deserve to get paid. Yeah. 
that's not the only degradation either for of Josh. Like uh, him and the old guitar player, um, they uh, they were hard up for cash once again on tour. You know, poor at managing their their lives and uh, lifestyles on tour. And so towards the end, once again, hard up for cash. Uh, you know, they're hungry. Kyle's like, hey, man, I got money, but I'm not just going to give it to you. And both of them are like, what? What do we have to do? This, I think this was before shit happened. Like, yeah. this was before shit on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, all right. It had escalated to shit on the wall. Yeah, this was the, this what happened before the shit. This is what led to it, probably. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, all right, guys, if you want this money, you got to lay down on the, on the ground. It was like dirty ground right there. He's like, you got to lay down on the ground right now. Roll over back and forth until until i say stop and so you're just rolling for money rolling like, for yeah. money is what we call <laughs> it. It so <laughs> and our video editing guy put the the price is right theme behind it when they were rolling around on this video we made <laughs> 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 but yeah we, one of the better things i've done with yeah. my life you know <laughs> i like to say uh, Kyle learned at an early age if you have money you can make people do dumb shit it's so, pretty yeah it's it's, it's, yeah. it's power and it's fun <laughs> I mean it reminds me of when I was a teenager and it was just anytime we had idea to do stupid shit if sim- someone didn't want to do it there's always a money incentive to do something like it however yeah. of course this is when I was like 16 or 17 and we would just do dumb shit for the sake of doing dumb shit dumb shit yeah, yeah. I mean you there was one pay me to do it yeah you're right I was like <laughs> give me that shit I'm gonna do it. It's like, <laughs> that's life experience. Man. So, I mean, that's, yeah, I remember. I remember one time I, I was 17 when this happened. It was me, my best friend Alex, and my buddy Chris. I have to call out Chris here because I know Chris always listens to this podcast. So shout out to you, Chris. Chris. We were 17, and I had the bright idea of let's fill up a bunch of water balloons put them in the back of his car, drive around with the windows open, and when we see someone we want to, just start throwing them out the windows at people. Nice. <laughs> The first people we end up firing at, we drove away from, but then we also realized, wait, we know those people. So we thought it was funny. <laughs> we kind of came around again and they joined us. But uh, the I think the crazy one was we were pulling up to these like to this parking lot where a bunch of street racers would be because there was always street racing that would happen on this one street in Milwaukee. And God, this had to be like 2012 even. So we had three water balloons left and there's a bunch of street racers everywhere. They just kind of park their cars there talking, and there's a bunch of pickup trucks there, and there's a bunch of ladies, like, sunbathing the pickup trucks at, like, 7.30 in the evening right in the summer. So we decide we've got each of one water balloon left. Let's see what happens. My buddy Chris is driving. Alex is in the front passenger seat. I'm in the back. And we just all yell, three, two, one, fire. And we throw – Chris and I throw ours overhand out and they really don't go anywhere because, well, it's kind of hard to throw and actually get any kind of air yeah. full sitting down in the car. My buddy Alex, though, decided to hook shot it because he was because he could have. So we hook shot it. We're watching this thing fall and it lands perfectly in the bed of the truck with these two ladies sitting in there. Splash of her and we just peeled the fuck out of there as fast as we possibly could because we're like, OK, these guys are street racers. If that's somebody's girlfriend or girlfriend's, they're going to probably want to come after us. So let's get the we're fuck get the out shit, of here. The shit beat out of us. Right. Yeah. Uh, Josh is here. Josh has arrived. Made it. Oh, hell yeah. Well, hey, now that Josh... Make some room. Make some room. We get him situated. Then we're gonna put him. Is that why you said that or no? No, we're just, I just didn't do it. Oh, no. <laughs> well, we'll get him situated. And then, of course, you guys know what it'll be. It's time to put him on the spot. So, Josh, first off, welcome. But now you have to answer three questions that I asked all three of these guys so far. First two, very simple. The third one, though, is going to be the one where literally the shit hits the fan. So the, first, so the first is A, what is your name? B, when it comes to Lydia Can't Breathe, what do you do in the band? And third, I want to know a little fun fact or fun wacky story about yourself that will hopefully make me fall out of my chair and laugh because these guys have come damn close to making me fall out with all the poop stories. Poop story? You already told me the poop story. Yeah, you can't use that. That's like the, that's <laughs> that's like the highest. Story. Story. I already know. Yeah, like he's not here. Awesome. Think poop about story. it. There may be other poop stories, man. I told both poop stories. The one with the kids? Yeah. I told them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So Sir, start with A. His name's Josh. Sir. My name's Josh. <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> I do play the drums. We keep them out of sight in the back. Obviously, I'm never on time. Ah. Um, 
Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> He's always on time, actually. He's that's usually, yeah. Chad's usually the late one. He was yeah. here first. <laughs> and then, out. I mean, other than like smearing shit on the wall. You know, <laughs> where do you go from there? Where do you go from there? Uh, I mean, one time I took like, I don't even know what I took, but like I was seeing bats flying around. The <laughs> and I was like running around and <laughs> trying to like kill them, but they were imaginary. <laughs> and then it was one of our roadies thought the sound guy was a girl. And he was like, oh man, I'm going to try to fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> And his mom was there. And she's like, like, oh no. You were like, why would you say that? (laughs) We 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 were just got bigger too. They said we could stay the night that night, and then after DJ said that. They told us we had to leave. Like, I'm not even joking you. They're like, like hey, cool. we just want to We realized, like, someone has school tomorrow and y'all can't stay. And we're like, it's Saturday and it's summer. And they're like, yeah, someone has school tomorrow. You got to leave. It's Sunday, like, Sunday hey, school. You got to leave right now. Oh. Thanks a lot. Hey, DJ yeah. is the zebra. He's who we wrote the song Zebra. Yeah. He's, yeah. yeah. More like witness a bunch of crazy. Yeah, stuff. Actually, he's been responsible for, responsible for a lot of story. crazy stuff. Yeah. He's got. We should get him. Huh. In yeah, right? this guy's <laughs> kicked out of a lot of venues and stuff. Actually. Uh. Oh. Well, yeah, when he thinks the sound guy's a chick and wants to get it on with him, I mean, yeah. definitely. But now I'm thinking about seeing imaginary bats. I'm pretty sure what you took was whatever the drug they concocted from Batman Begins was. And you might be yeah. yeah. Bruce Wayne. I don't yeah. fucking know. Was a, there was a guy selling rare purple flowers in front of the menu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say no. I'll say now we know Josh's alter ego is Bruce Wayne, a.k.a. Batman. He's not the hero. Yeah, he's exactly. He's, he's bald Batman. Right? But he is the hero that they deserve. You don't know. He has a mask on. Yeah, yeah he could be bald. Yeah. Could be ah, one of us. It fits better. Oh. I mean, now I'm expecting when, with live shows returning, <laughs> and if you guys are playing a live show in October, especially around Halloween, then I'm almost certain that Josh has to be wearing a Batman mask during a live show. <laughs> That's funny. We actually did some tours uh, with, we used to do themes, like movies, video games, that kind of stuff, pop culture. We and uh, a tour yeah, poster with we, us wearing Batman characters. Yeah. yeah. I, actually, I was, were Batman. I was Batman. Was I was Bane. Bane. I was the Riddler, actually. Two Face. Yeah. He was Two Face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a poster somewhere. And then AJ was a Joker. Yeah, we'll get to yeah. And then AJ got in trouble and then ne- and couldn't go on the next tour. And uh, so Kyle really switched good. over to the Joker, and our hired gun was Batman. Yeah. And Denim. Um, we called Denim. Him Denim. That yeah. poor guy. Oh my God. There's a story right Denim there. Yeah, Daigle's also bad. Batman got passed around a lot. It's kind of like the 90s when Batman was yeah. like five dudes. <laughs> so you got Michael Keaton, you got Val <laughs> Kilmer, you got all... George Clooney. Yeah. yeah. Kyle was the Michael Keaton, the original. Yeah. Yeah. I wore the costume the first, best. and then it was best. like a it was like a $500 Batman costume. It was like legit. So like I was like, yo, I don't want to wear this the next tour. We'll get the hired gun to wear it. But he had to wear the costume that I had sweated in. And then Daigle, our old guitar player, was such a ridiculous person. Like, he was like, yo, man, like, smells like shit in this thing. Like, you know, it's just like, dude, you got to wash it. Like, you know, he, like, wore it for, like, 30 days, and he thought, like, when he sweated in it, you know what I mean? And then he just dried it out in the van or whatever afterwards. I think he kept it in a plastic bag. Oh, no. I was like, you're right, throwing, yeah, I was like, you're throwing a sweaty leather costume in a plastic bag. I was like, and you sweat in it every night. I was like, it's got like regurgitated sweat. And I remember he'd get done and I'd be like, you got to leave it on because people want you to take pictures in it. And he'd be like, dude, but I, I smell like shit. What do you mean? And I was like, dude, we're paying you to play guitar for the tour. Like, you have to be Batman the whole show. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, sweat how yeah, you just be so. dripping sweat and like so pissed off about it. And the other kid was like a pretty boy and he fucked denim hated he it so bad. Yeah. He was like the Clooney. Yeah, he's yeah, definitely the Clooney of the, of the group. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, that kid, holy shit. We gave him so much shit and he was not ready for it. Yeah. Like, he's a cool guy, man. We, we got along with him, but he was not ready for the ball busting at all. Day one, he shows up in a, a, a Canadian tuxedo. 
all denim. So <laughs> immediately we would say, "Hey, so what's up, denim?" Like and that just that was his nickname. We never part. called him by his name again. We that was called n- him denim. Nickname number one. Yeah. All right, so we're on tour with someone else called it like Dead Horse Trial. We we're on Stink Dick or something. No, no, garbage, 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 dick. garbage dick. Yeah, garbage <laughs> dick was another one. So like. He's like, um, he's nailing like as many chicks as he can on this tour, which is great. Good for him, you know. So he's like yeah. banging this chick out in a van like <laughs> all night on one of our days off. And he comes into a, in the house where we're crashing at like 3 a.m. Like thinking hours. everyone would be like, he's you know, in his out. underwear. <laughs> and so is this chick. She's in like a shirt and panties and that's it. And they come in to use the bathroom and they come into a full on like everyone's awake party. This is like two bands yeah, they're like, in a oh, house. Oh, yeah. It like, was us Dead Horse. That's yeah. right. Dead Horse Trial. And, and so like he's awkwardly standing in the hall in his underwear, you know, covering his <laughs> junk a bit while she's in the bathroom. And uh, so one of the guys from the other band goes, hey, what's up, garbage dick? And everyone just like explodes <laughs> in, in the party. And she was like, oh. It was, no, actually. Well, they had sex in the bathroom that like probably like 16 different guys were using during this time. It was pretty oh. terrible. <laughs> Hey, the chick was down to, but, to fucking yeah. the fart smell. Yeah. whatever, man. <laughs> but she came out of the bathroom and's like, "Come on, garbage dick, let's go." <laughs> <laughs> Everyone exploded yeah, laughing like, again. Oh, yeah. So oh, on stage, from then on, Kyle's like, "All right, give it up for Ryan on guitar. Give it, up, give it up for Josh on drums. Give it up for Shad on bass, and give it up for Garbage Dick on lead guitar." He's, <laughs> he's so mad and was fucking. Batman suit was staring at Kyle. Yeah, he was uh, like, God, poor guy, man. Damn it. But put him through the ringer. But when it comes down to, it, I mean, you guys are roasting each other all the time, but it's all in good fun, and it's it's uh, comedy ends up bringing everyone together in a way, and the fact sure. that everyone yeah, yeah, yeah. is able to just kind of a serious fan. Yeah. yeah. Well, 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 we're, we're serious with the music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything else we like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're just telling you about the funny ones like there's other ones that are like man these guys need to see a therapist or some shit you know like <laughs> how is josh is alive after like, all, this? <laughs> all those bats yeah you know? like, i got them all <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh my god there's too many of them <gasps> they're everywhere then next... yeah. i only see a couple of them every now and then <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, but like the stories you're telling is, I'm, I'm, it's making me reminisce about random wacky stories that I experienced in college as well. So it's kind of taking me back to that fun time. And I was thinking about, you know, there's times where I kind of do like enjoy reminiscing about those and want to end up recreating some of those moments of just the absolute random things that had happened. Like uh, when we made my buddy dress up as a janitor because he came last in our fantasy football league and we made him offer his janitorial services to other apartments that were around <laughs> and there and like a bunch of them were like saying no so uh, like all of our friends like started leaving go back to like the apartment that we were at and i'm like no you got to keep going man you got to keep going knocked on this one door and it was and these two girls were like oh yeah we'd like some uh, clean service like they, they told like to clean the bathroom and i'm like okay and they're like what are you here i'm like i'm just making sure he does like he does his punishment okay you want some food well, okay, I love some yeah. food. <laughs> so, yeah, show. Hell yeah. yeah, so they, they made me a bunch of like fried rice and some general style chicken. I'm like, holy shit, this is fantastic. Yeah. He, when, when he was done cleaning, he's like, oh man, you guys had, you had food? I'm like, yeah, this was great. Can I have some food too? And I'm just thinking, I want to say no, but you're such a nice guy, man. I, I kind of yeah. want to, I was like, hey, can we get him some food? They're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He cleaned our bathroom. We're good. <laughs> so yeah, we love this guy. We came back. To, we came back to his apartment with like just the most amount of food you possibly could imagine. Like just like three giant styrofoam containers full of food. And nice. then of course we get back to this apartment. And everyone, all our friends are like, "Oh my god, you guys got food!" I'm like, "No, it's ours." What? <laughs> yeah, because you guys didn't keep going with us. Like, come on. Why would I give it to you? <laughs> <laughs> now, has your friend been a janitor ever since? He's like, uh, just run with it. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> unfortunately, he hey, hasn't. All you do a- is mop a bathroom and I get chicken. Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was oh, there was another one that we did. There was the there was the next year where the kid that came in last, the fantasy football league, he was in Argentina during the, like during the first semester. So the second semester, he comes back first day of school. He's at the business school. He's wearing a suit to class. I'm like, okay, what the hell's going on? And I was always the one that delineated the punishments. And at that point, I said, all right, today's the day you have to face your punishment. He's like, what the hell do I have to do? I knocked on every single door in our on our apartment floor, and I said. 
can you guys get me, can you guys come out here with as much like perfume, body spray, cologne as you possibly can? And we oh, yeah. walked down the hall and we just sprayed him profusely with it. I said, oh, you yeah. can't, and you, and he had a whole day of class. I'm like, you can't come back and shower and take and like wash all this stuff until you're done with class. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Yeah. Back in the day when there were people at the mall, I hated when the late, they would like spray. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Pretty much what we created, we recreated, uh, we recreated that SpongeBob episode where they're on, uh, the Flying Dutchman ship and they have to go through the perfume department. That's pretty much what it was like. Nice. But it's just like those, it's, it's the, the great part about it is like, there's a lot of people that just have a bunch of those stories like that. And it's like, Oh, do you want to share them or not? Why not share them? There's so much fun to be a part of. There's so much fun to share because it's lighthearted. It gets people just to laugh, gets people to enjoy, and it brings people together in the end. Even if you're roasting somebody, there's probably another time that's going to happen the next day or two where someone else is going to be roasting that person that got roasted the day beforehand is going to be in on that. So it's just a whole oh, cyclical yeah. kind of thing yeah. where oh, yeah. there's, everyone's there's having fun always, to get closer for it. Every Shit time we go in every direction. direction. There's tour <laughs> pranks every time. Like, what, what, what was the mushroom head that they used to do the tour pranks? They, they took all of our stuff in our van and put it, like, in their bus. Because we, 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 we left the van, we left it unlocked in Mexico, and they're like, "Dude, someone stole all your shit." And we're like, <laughs> "What?" All of our stuff was gone, like expensive laptops, like everything. And they're like, "God, they didn't even tell us till like after the show." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was pretty. Yeah, <laughs> I was, I was, I was pretty. pretty, pretty like, oh. yeah, was pretty yeah. like, hey, don't leave your shit. They're so like, rule number one: lock your shit. I was <laughs> like, whoa, dude. <laughs> Like, you couldn't have gave us a warning instead of giving us, like, an anxiety attack for, like, two hours. <laughs> now it's funny, but yeah. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah, but now every time you leave the bus, every, like, you guys are all going to check to make sure everything's locked after that. Uh, yeah, so. we lock it every time now. That's yeah. true. It's more of a lesson. Yeah. And then you have people like Daigle who, uh, you know, manage to forget things like locking the van. And, like, uh, one time... Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in the parking lot of somewhere. It's late at night. Everyone has to take a leak before we uh, go to bed. So Daigle and Ryan choose opposing sides of the van <laughs> to pee. Hey. And the next thing you Not hear knowing. is Ryan <laughs> going, hey. So Daigle's just straight up pissing on his leg. You know, like. <laughs> it, was the, it was the wind, man. The oh, wind it was the cut. wind, was it? Uh, I think Daigle was aiming for his leg. That's probably more like it. But no, nah, like, it's terrible. Yeah, we had we've we've had a lot of fun, you know, just shit and piss Dirty on tour. <laughs> I'll say with all the fun you guys have had on tour, then when the COVID pandemic hit and you guys probably couldn't go out and tour at all, that must have kind of been a little bit hard just so that, that all those stories and all that, you know, brotherhood camaraderie of just having fun and roasting everybody as possible kind of potentially took a hit, did it? No, Kyle just took a shit in the box earlier. <laughs> 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 Oh uh, yeah, we didn't we didn't get to do much uh, last year, but we pretty much were just writing anyway. It kind of um, worked out. It worked out. Our, we didn't really have anything. Yeah. Kind of we were stuff. planning on taking it off and yeah. just writing as much material as possible. And then when we weren't able to work. It was just kind of like okay, right? Yeah, we'll just write, write, write. Now we got like I want to say like thirteen more songs in the kitty um, that we have recorded that we haven't yeah, dropped yet. Got a music so, video done. Yeah. Yeah, we just dropped the the music video for Sheep. Like that's uh, that was two almost two weeks ago now. Yeah, yeah, it's getting, we, a, lot of, um, getting a lot of views. Yeah, we hit hundred k today. We like we were like under hundred k. Like by it was like ninety one thousand yesterday. Just shot up again today. So we've uh, we've had a pretty good start with that video. Stoked on it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, good quality. Oh, so that's fantastic. Oh, Are you guys doing a huge campaign around that video though to you know get it out, get the word out there, or is this all organic? uh sean is helping us so uh, we got a guy steve that's like a radio guy and then we have other people that are like marketing and stuff like that that have helped us with it for sure um and then it's just been like like a, it's been the, the best team we've ever had behind anything yeah, you know yeah. I mean? yeah. and it's, it's probably like one of the best you know uh one, one of the better songs that yeah we've, that we've written lately and I feel like hand in hand everything. Yeah, the video is like really good quality, so it just kind of all came together, and then we finally, like you said, we got like a bunch of good people behind it promoting it and stuff. So it's kind of yeah. This is like the tenth or twelfth interview we've done in like the last week. I want to say 
Sean yeah. has been keeping us pretty, you know, pretty busy. Like, you know what I mean? She's like every week she's just like, yo, Stack I got up. this, 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 and this, you guys available. Mm-hmm. And I, I knew that these next couple of months that when we dropped it, that we would have to do this. So I've been trying to be available, you know what I mean? And then it's cool when the rest of the guys can come as well. Yeah, totally understandable. Well, again, thank you, rest of the guys, for coming as well. So, who? Because otherwise, you know, the the first like half, probably. Like, I mean, looking at time right now, I recorded this like 40, 40 some minutes of this podcast. Just been just incredible, funny stories. So it's been fantastic up to this point, and that's what I absolutely love about these podcasts. Plus, also big shout out to Shauna as well because she keeps sending me stuff left and right as well. I'm just like, can I get as many yeah. as possible on? I mean. From He's a workhorse, yeah, for yeah. sure, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm so glad I ended up getting connected with her just by basically requesting, it was requesting one band back, and I think it was like October of 2020, and then the sense that I think I've worked through like 12 or 13 times on things like this, oh, nice, there's still nice. plenty more to come, so I'm like, let's just keep these rolling. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> But she's very on it too. Like she, I've never had any uh, PR person that's been like that. To be honest, like she's super. She she like hits me up and lets me know like make sure you're there. You know what I mean on time and all this stuff. And it's not like I don't. I wouldn't be there on time anyway. But it definitely is helpful to have someone like have your back on it. Yeah, yeah make through a few PR people. Yeah. It's nice to have someone that actually does what they say they're gonna yeah. do. Yeah, <laughs> she can race yeah. for sure. Yeah, and even to add on to that, pretty much every time I'm done with an interview with a band that Sean has connected me with, either right before I'm done doing it or right after I like close out the uh, the Zoom call, I usually get an email from her asking how it went. So there's always some sort of connection there. It's like because she pretty much knows like okay, he's gonna be on time no matter what. Because I I think I've only maybe been off like by two minutes once because. The internet wasn't connecting to my computer for some reason. Yeah, that's I happened that's yesterday. I did a, like uh, another interview, and it, it, my internet or something was off, and it just kept dropping. It was, it was like bugging me out for sure. Yeah, but Sh- Shauna is always on top of everything. She's always on the ball with this stuff. And it's just the fact that you can clearly tell that she cares about every everything that she's doing, whatever, and with every band, every person that is interviewing any of the bands or doing any press for them. Just that level of care just really speaks volumes. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> and it's good when you find that person for your team too. It's uh, like it's almost like this huge weight off your shoulders, huge relief to know that somebody's actually handling that that knows what they're doing too. I mean, we we just play instruments, like we we're you know otherwise figuring it out as we go. So yeah. like having people on the team that can go, this is what you need to do, or this is one area you could focus on, really helps. So. Yeah, she's been doing a great job. Thank you. Yeah, it's same, it's same thing on my end as well, where it's I could try and get as many bands as possible, but having connections with these different PR people, even some PR firms as well, and it's like, hey, you want to potentially check out this band, you want to interview this band, and just seeing some of the ones that come in and it's bands that I really listen to and really get behind already. I'm like, holy shit, yeah, let's bring them on, bring them on, and see if we can yeah. make something happen. And even, sure. if it's like, even if it's okay, they can only do it during this weird time. I'm just going to say, you know, if I want to do it, fuck it. I'm going to make my time work. Even if yeah, I take sure. time off for my full time, if I'm going to have to rearrange my schedule to be completely and utterly wonky just to make it happen, I'm going to make yeah. it happen. And nice. and here we are. Yeah. Thanks for your time, man. Well, thank, yeah, th- again, thanks we for being here. We know you had better things to do, so we yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> Kyle, better things to do. The, the, pretty much the most fun thing I do during the week or any day is do these podcasts, these interviews, yeah, because I love talking to bands. I love connecting with them. I love hearing your stories. I love hearing about your music as well. And just, I don't know why, it's just, I could have, you know, one of the worst days. I could be super duper tired. I've had them where I'm just like really beat, really run down. It's like, okay, I got one of these in five minutes. I start everything up and I'm still tired. But when I see the notification that wh- whoever, whatever band it is, whatever artist it is, is in the waiting room, ready to jump into the Zoom call, my energy level just shoots right up. It's absolutely intense. Yeah, it's, just, it's like an adrenaline rush. Yeah. yeah. It is. That's like it just being on flows. stage for, for me, man. That's like, I know exactly what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. That's it's, that for podcasts for you. Like, that's why I think probably all of us are probably yeah. in the band and in the first place, that live experience, yeah, that, yeah. that adrenaline We're definitely rush itching to get, to get back out there for sure. Like, yeah, yeah. Writing's definitely fun, you know, and then practicing, you know, is cool, but there's nothing like playing live. That's the reward. Sure. Yeah, 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 for and sure. So a, good for you, man. Good for you for yeah. doing what you love doing, man. Well, on top of that, the one thing I've really missed out on over the past year, a little over a year, is the is that live show experience, too, because that adrenaline rush that I get, 
especially like when podcast guests come in, I'm just super duper excited about it. It's the same thing that happens when I go see a live show and the band comes on, even if it's one of the openers or if it's the headliner, whoever I'm there to see, whoever I'm just there, whoever's there on the bill as well, no matter what, it's just that energy level just gets amped up. The adrenaline just gets going crazy when that, when the band goes on, because at this live setting, everyone's here to see this music because they connected it in some positive way. And there was one day I was like, I, this was back in 2019 in November. I was super duper tired, worked a bunch of overtime all week. And then even had to work overtime on Saturday. And I did not want to go to this show because I was just super duper tired. I thought, you know what? I paid for the ticket though. So let's go, let's see what happens. And it was one of the best shows I've ever been to. And it was one nice. that, it was like, I got like, I enjoyed seeing Light the Torch. I want to see Howard Jones. I really got into Fit for a King. And then Ice Nine Kills was the headliner. And it was just, that. it was like a show where all of a sudden I'm like, I didn't really know much of Ice Nine Kills up until that show. And after that, I'm like, I need to hear more and more and more from this band. And now I love the band like crazy. I'm like, hell yeah. So that's like, I miss that adrenaline rush too. And just the, what's the best way to put it? The passionate, just angst and anxiety and just full on positive feels and just intense emotion energy. that you get <laughs> from a live show, whether it's the band that's on stage and all, and us in the crowd as well, just the feeding frenzy of energy going back and forth. It's just the coolest thing ever. And I really, really miss it, but shows are coming back. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah boys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we played a few um, here in Florida because uh, in Florida, we just pretty much yeah. opening back up. Nobody <laughs> yeah. a bit about the uh, pandemic or anything. We're just like, all right, let's just play shows again. So um, we played what three, four, yeah. four now, something like that. And we've got, um, they're all pretty good, too. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was so good getting back out on stage, and it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, we've got some coming up at uh, the end of August and the beginning of September as well. Um, we're looking at hopefully touring in fall, we'll see how that goes. I mean, that's all still kind of on, you know, uh, we've got some offers and everything that we're waiting through and all that, but uh, hopefully it'll be this fall, we'll be back out there. Man. Hopefully so. Where are you guys playing in August and September? Just in, around Florida, southeastern part of the United States? Or? Florida and like southeast. I think we're playing Tampa, Tampa Jacksonville, Sarasota, and Valdosta, Georgia. 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 Yeah, four shows. Darn, not north, not north enough in that time period because I will be on the eastern part of the United States in September, but it'll be for Blue Ridge Rock Fest. So okay, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good one. Up. Yeah. I have to, I'm looking forward to traveling there, but then looking at other live shows happening as well, it's just, I'm seeing more tours get announced. I'm seeing festivals, like they're releasing their lineups and there's one in here in Wisconsin in July. And it's just, it's like, kind of like, is it going to go on? Is it not going to go on? It's kind of like the first big rock and metal festival that's going to happen in the States because it's happening in July. I'm just like, well, I hope this goes well because then it, is that it means rock like, fest that you're talking about. Yep. It's rock it. fest. Yeah. yeah we've yeah. played that before once. Two, yeah, 2018, 2019, we played Rockfest. Yeah, I'll be. I was not able to make it for either of those years. I'm I'm going this year though, and I'm just looking forward to just getting back. It's like, it, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, our fun. our buddy's band going right. It's in uh, Widow Seven. Are they playing? I think Widow Seven right. might be going. Uh, check them out anyway, man. They're um they're uh, a reboot kind of a, a new project from the guys from Dead Horse Trauma that we toured with. So Widow 7, check them out. And they may be up there in um, at Rock Fest this year. I'll have to look at the lineup and then, because one thing I've been trying to do also with the podcast is get a good number of bands that are playing at Rock Fest on the podcast as well. Because yeah, one thing I like, sure. I like to talk to them, like to get some more, you know, get, get some more of a uh, press behind them, a little bit more of momentum if I can behind them before, you know, playing a live show like that. Plus then if I'm going to, I want to go and see them as well. And then also make good on my promises for every band that I've uh work like interviewed and that it's gonna be a rock fest which is it's probably gonna kill my wallet in a way but i always promise the first <laughs> round to be on me so i have I to those. basically pay up except for uh stitch up hard i just have to bring monster for them yeah <laughs> oh yeah nice. we played with them before yeah yeah, yeah. The, the chick singer yeah yeah. yeah yeah over in arizona is when we played with them, I think. yeah yeah yeah, because I, I recently spoke with her and I'm just like, man, this is fun. And I'm like, yeah, she doesn't Mixie, drink. It, right? Isn't it Mexi or something Mixie. like that? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was fun. But going back to you guys, because like you said, you guys were planning on taking 2020 off anyway, just to kind of just get back to writing and just fo- like kind of focus on that, maybe take a break a little bit. So in an odd way, you guys kind of were going to take advantage of the pandemic before it was a pandemic. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. 
And what's crazy too is before yeah, the awesome. pandemic hit is when we recorded Sheep, which is all about like uh, it, it's it's kind of adjacent to the the whole pandemic thing. How the uh, the media and uh, the news and uh, the government all just kind of tries to herd you in this direction, and that's you know where Sheep comes from. And no then way. the pandemic happened. We're like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> and we saw you know that kind of came to the limelight where everyone's like what's going on what are they telling us you know mm-hmm. it worked out. yeah it worked yeah out. yeah because even when i was going through the song as well i did a deep dive into it and even like the meaning i looked into it it pretty much fell along the same line because what i got of it was about thinking for yourself and being yourself regardless of how the pressure of society will try and force you to conform to what they want you to do yeah pretty much yeah right and I'm not going to lie, the, the title Sheep really just sets the tone for it, especially over the past year, different political things. Or it's like, oh, if you're going to follow along with this, if like different groups are like, oh, you're going to get the vaccine, you're going to be a sheep, you're going to wear a mask, you're going to be a sheep. It's just a bunch of just different uh, sightings on different political things, different mass media things like got to follow this or this or this, just kind of hurting you into this group think kind of mentality and try not want you to think for yourselves. We're on the op- you guys are on the opposite end where it's like, no, 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 no. Think for yourselves. Like, actually question yeah. these things. Actually yeah. look into these yeah. things and formulate your own opinion. And don't let somebody else's or some other entity's idea become yours just because they hold some sort of power. Exactly. Yes. For sure. Knowledge is power. Except for you said it smarter than we might have. Yeah. You know, that sounded You're pretty like, good. Can, can, can we get that right? Too. What was yeah. that? <laughs> oh, I can get that right. I'm, I'm looking at a different like screen on my computer right now. And like, I've got a whole sheet full of this stuff and I do this all the time. And I don't know why it's just over time doing these things and just really analyzing songs. Cause I always start out with what the mean is I've gone from just kind of being more straightforward. It's a kind of getting a little poetic in a way. It's, it's a kind of weird, but I don't know if it kind of also follows the arc of like my favorite band at the same time where their lyrics are getting more poetic as time goes on. So I'm kind of just like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to lean right into this. Right. Right. Good stuff. Good stuff. But no, it's uh, we don't really have a stance as a band on any of those political topics and everything. And it's not that we never talk about them, but kind of along the same theme of sheep, we just like decide for yourself. I, it doesn't matter to me if Ryan is a insane freak about wearing a mask everywhere, which he's, you know, you know he's not like that. But I mean, yeah. if he were, that's, more that's on him. Yeah, you do your thing, man. I'm not going to bother you about it. Yeah, but I've, I've, decide for yourself. Don't let somebody else, you know, make that choice for you. Yeah, and I've had I've had conversations like that in the podcast before, where pretty much my, like the stance that I take is we're all adults here. We all have the power to make our own choices, and you have reasons for your choice. I have reasons for my choices. So if you want to go do something, it's kind of like I'll let you do you. You let me do me. We're all okay. Yeah, yeah beautiful. Love it. Yeah. And, and that way, Unless just, you're in a van with somebody in enclosed spaces and then don't fart. You know, that's just polite. Yeah. Or, 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 <laughs> shit, or shit in a box. Or shit in a box for that matter. Don't shit where I'm going to be. <laughs> exactly. But it's still kind of crazy that you guys came up with Sheep and you wrote it. And then all of a sudden the pandemic hit and it just kind of took the overall theme of the song to the forefront. And yeah. yet you had yet to release it. And even though it's like releasing it, it kind of can take that political notion to it. However... You guys aren't trying to take any political stance, any kind of more of a realization standpoint on the song, especially through the meaning. But at times I've had people on the podcast where it's like, yeah, you know, you take a look at what's going on and you write songs about it. It's like, oh, no, they wrote this song about it because it's an opportunistic opportunistic time. Well, this is what we're going through. What else do you expect them to write about? You want to be as honest as possible. You want to express themselves as artists. This is perfect. Yeah, 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 for sure. You can't be like relating to like, World War Two or something. Yeah, <laughs> right, what's relevant? Right? <laughs> yeah, it's you can't go and do like the the was it the Ghost of You by My Chemical Romance to do the whole entire like World War Two music video kind of thing because yeah, yeah, you're uh, kind of bringing historical context to it. Because uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like you're kind of bringing historical context to it, but especially at the time we're going through now, artists and musical artists specifically have this profound time period to that writing songs during this time. Because, of course, the history books, they're going to be able to talk about exactly what happened. They're going to be able to talk about the events that had happened and the aftermath. But what they're not going to be able to record is the emotions and the different thoughts and different things that people went through during this time. 
And the best way to capture that is through art and music. And because you take a listen to music, there are probably certain songs that you guys listen to where when you listen to them, they take you back to a certain time period, either when you listen to them, when they were the most prominent point in your life. And when you take, because they relate to emotions that happened during that time. We've all gone through some rather similar emotions through anxiety, questioning, grief, even maybe some depression over this pandemic as well, because we had no idea where the hell anything was going. But especially as, as musicians, you guys have the ability to write about this stuff, to really take fold of this stuff and kind of give a history and give a historical, like, um, what's the best way to put it? Historical record of yeah. the emotions that had happened here, because then people can go back in 10 years, try and wonder what it was like to remember what it was like to go back through the pandemic. And they're going to listen to these songs that you guys had wrote along with a lot of other musical artists. And they're going to be able to remember what it was like not to, you know, try and go back and feel those feelings again, but to remember how far we've come. Yeah, for sure. Look at yeah. me going all poetic once again. Yeah, you're, good, man. You're, you're good at it, man. You're coming. <laughs> yeah, just go, man. He's a philosophizer. Hey, he's a philosophizer. Yeah, you have a good outlook. His philosophy is your with some knowledge. <laughs> Honestly, I should start doing something that I'm like, let me hit you with some knowledge, sir. And just kind of <laughs> like this, see what happens. But kind of jumping a little bit more into Sheep as well, because I know you guys said you recently released the music video for it as well. Uh, I checked out the music video once, but it is completely just spaced out of my head right now. I cannot remember exactly what it was. And I'm very sorry for that, guys, because normally I'm on top of this. But sometimes I just, you know, some things get pushed out of my brain. It's kind of like with uh, Homer Simpson. Oh, when something new gets in my brain, something else gets pushed out. Oh, it's kind of like a bunch of dudes playing music in a bunch of different rooms. And then there's like a little, uh, some little kids and stuff wearing sheet masks. And they're like just, conjugating into like a group of sheep from some, and then they're trying to get that one kid to some older sheep are trying to get the little sheep to come be bigger sheep someday. How's that, that for some poetry? Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 is, that is for that is good for some poetry where you have the older <laughs> sheep going to the younger ones. Come back. <laughs> 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 but then again, that does make a lot of sense. And if you guys are playing a bunch of different rooms as well, especially having it more of like an enclosed space, it also works in a weird way to give more context to the song because when you're thinking about sheep, you're thinking about kind of that group think mentality, you kind of have to keep in that border, keep within line or that circle of that idea, that mentality. So you can't really, you don't want to, you don't, they, uh, they don't really want you like to break through that and kind of think on other ideals or think on your own. So kind of keeping the planes out kind of in that enclosed space in the music video, again, it kind of also speaks to that style as well because the sound, it can't really get out too far. Yeah, yeah. right, right. That's true. Again, also now, like um, the, the metaphor of like, um, you know, if, if the people are sheep, well, who are the people that are, you know, trying to control them? I mean, you've got the sheep dogs and you got the wolves. From a sheep's perspective, you know, there's not that big of a difference other than the one will kill you. But the, I mean, it's the same, that same control kind of thing that's happening. Um, so like whether it's the people that are supposed to be guarding us or the people that are trying to take over or, or get through to us, get past like our defenses and get to us as like sheep or whatever. Uh, it's hard to differentiate sometimes. But um, I am your shepherd. Follow me. <laughs> Bald Shepherd right there. Bald Shepherd. <laughs> also, then you have to fashion some drums to make him look like Shepherd Staff so we can all really follow him. <laughs> shepherd. shepherd Staff. Uh, but I'll, 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 yeah. Can we can just like superimpose him? You look really close. <laughs> but, but oddly enough, because it also can kind of speak a little bit politically, because no matter what side of the spectrum you're on, you're going to end up seeing the opposite end of the political spectrum as the wolf. And you're going to see the side that you associate the most with as the sheepdog. However, again, the overall end game kind of ends up being the same in the end. Right. Right. Yeah. For sure. Man, this song is deep. And well, again, maybe a lot of people didn't even know it, which is awesome. Right. Right. It's not just about an animal. <laughs> it's not just about it well I, I, animals are per, like animals are a perfect way to just show through metaphor just things that are going on currently i mean take a look at 
one of the most popular books of the 20th century was George Orwell's Animal Farm, using farm right. animals to show the differentiation between a democratic society and a communist society. Yeah. Right. Our last video before sheep was zebra. <laughs> Ironic. Ironic. <laughs> right. We didn't mean to be like a menagerie band, but like it just kind of happened that way. I'll say what's like what's gonna be one word titles. One word titles. <laughs> Next yeah. one will be wolf. Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Or is it going to be like hippopotamus or something like that? Hippopotamus, bro. Hey, let's go Gibbon. Let's go Gibbon, man. Hippop Gibbons are hippopotamus. Hey, yeah. hey hippopotamus are freaking <laughs> deadly. They're fast. They're they're big. They're big. They're fat. But if you get them in the water, they're fast as all hell. <laughs> they're violent as shit, yeah. too. People don't realize how violent they are. They're responsible for more people's deaths than alligators in Africa. It's crazy. Yeah. So okay. People don't yeah. know it. They yeah. like to cover them. Because it is yeah. violent. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say they potentially would be more responsible than, you know, deaths from by people than alligators in Florida. But in Florida, you got Florida man just to take care of every single oh, alligator. Yeah, we're just... biting faces down here, man. <laughs> biting faces, you're just you're punching them in the face, just like, you know what? No. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just like nah, I'm done. Right. <laughs> Writing your name with shit on the wall, fucking. <laughs> yeah, no alligator wants to deal with a band that writes their name on the wall. With their own shit. <laughs> and shit. It's like, oh, no, no, that's somebody like, cleaner, bro. Yeah, I'm just like, like, no, this is very, that's some very shit. This guy's got bats inside of him. He's, got bats. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably thinking, man, I, I'm now understanding Florida, man. That's just a normal guy down there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, with shit and shit. In a way, kind of, because one of the fun things I remember when the whole entire Florida Man meme started becoming really popular was you can search up Florida Man and then type in like your birthday, like just the the day in the like the day in the month of the year, and just not the year though, because you know you find anything. You just type in the day and then the the month, but just kind of figure out what was the Florida Man headline from your birthday just to see what it was. And I think mine was like <laughs> Florida. Florida man gets arrested for mowing lawn in his underwear. It's like, yeah. that's rather normal. I've seen that here. It's hot. It's right. hot. Yeah. It's hot. Yeah. 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 As as possible. I would never call the cops on that guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw a guy riding a motorized, uh, it's a fucking a recliner. Just, but it was like, had a motor on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what I the fuck? How's that work? <laughs> Jesus Christ, you guys, are, you guys make me want to like move down to Florida just so I can be a part of all this wacky shit and just have it yeah. be completely and utterly normal. Yeah. <laughs> Until you deal with it every day and it becomes normal and then it just kind of gets in your way. It's like, fuck, <laughs> there's some guy laying on the on the road out here like in, in, in a kiddie pool. Okay, <laughs> traffic's backed up. You know, but, you know, it's, weird shit goes on here all the time. Like I'll all the time. The guy in a kiddie pool oh, in the traffic. That sounds like the first football game of the year when I was in college every single year. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's have it. See if we can, can you see this video on his phone? It's the guy in the fucking thing. Oh, my <laughs> oh, God. That's awesome. Let's see what we got. Uh, yeah. The, the way. Yeah, yeah, right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's not nice. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Holy shit! Did he put yeah, like a? Sitting, I'm just sitting in my car. I'm like, oh, it was a recliner. Day. <laughs> Did the dude just put like a, a recliner on like a rascal scooter? It was yeah, it was on a motorized scooter. Yeah, something. I don't even know how he did it. I think he had like a mullet and a beard, like yeah. a bush light. <laughs> oh, it has to be bush light. Yeah. He was, he was moving too. That, it was going pretty, pretty. Oh fast. yes, you almost crashed if you watched those. Uh, <laughs> I'll say no. I kind of want to find a uh, motorized scooter because I know, I know my my best friend. He knows a bunch of people that just get all this random shit. So I'm pretty sure if I talk to him within like three days, I could get a recliner and a motorized scooter, and I could have the uh, go to this this guy's warehouse that he lives right by the uh, Milwaukee Bus Depot. Literally bought a warehouse, and that's where he lives. Just has a bunch of like old heavy <laughs> like to, like heavy machinery and tools like for all this shit. I'm like, you know what? Let's give it a shot. And unfortunate, and this guy kind of has a Florida men mentality as well, where in his backyard, which is basically right next to these train tracks. He bought this giant top of a like a uh, like a beer kettle where they brew like where the beer brews and just kind of sits for a while. Right. Stainless steel. Use this as a gigantic fire pit. Oh, that's awesome! Nice. <laughs> that's but fire. the more Florida man thing that they do is they will find like like a bunch of like toilets, just like you know people 
they get a new toilet, they put it out in the curb for the trash collectors to pick up or the uh, scavengers <laughs> to pick up. This guy will pick up a bunch of them and then they will take him to the roof of the uh, this warehouse that he lives and they'll throw him off the roof because it's fun. And the thing that <laughs> makes me the maddest about it is I have never done this yet. Yet I've heard about like three or four parties of this actually happen. I'm like, dude, why have you not invited me to these things? Like, I want to throw a toilet off a fucking roof. Yeah, that's some boondock saint shit, yeah. man. Like, were they trying to hit Russian mobsters with those toilets? Like, <laughs> no, they literally just they literally just throw them, watch them crash, and it's and they laugh and they because the bus depot is literally right next to them. But there's this giant brick wall that separates the warehouse and the bus depot. So when they throw them off, like none of the pieces go to the bus depot, and the people that drive the buses they will literally sit out and watch them do this because they think it's hilarious. <laughs> it's like, that's great. It's like no one's going to stop him. It's like you can't stop him anyway because the guy is taking his property, which is the toilets, throwing them off of the roof of his warehouse, and they're landing on the concrete, which is still owned by him. So, yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> I so, would yeah. do the same thing in his in his situation. <laughs> so, so yeah, when you, I'll put it this way. I can always uh, put a word to my buddy. So whenever if you guys end up touring and coming back to Milwaukee – you guys want to throw some toilets out the roof? Dude, Let me know. Are we, we're tossing toilets in Milwaukee. <laughs> we're, yes, we're, we're in. Please set that yeah, up. That's yeah. the thing. We may just come yeah. to do that. I don't even, yeah. We don't even necessarily have to be on tour. I can get some planes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what time is it? We, tomorrow? You, got, you good tomorrow? Uh, I'd have to, I, again, you have to, if, I, if you, that's what I was kind of saying for the tour because I'm not sure how many toilets this guy has. I'd have to talk to my friend, yeah. get an account. But, if if I have a certain period of time where all of a sudden you guys are gonna end up showing up on tour, hey, can make sure there's a good amount of toilets ready to go. Yeah, all we have to save them up. up. Yeah, save them up. Yeah. All we have to do is I know all we have to do is we have to clean up the clean up the mess afterwards, but it's kind of contained in a smaller area. So yeah. Kyle may take a shit in one of them before yeah. we toss it. <laughs> <laughs> He should be shitting it while we push it off. <laughs> and then we've got to find some donors that are willing to clean it up afterwards, yeah. you know, and then we'll, we'll, we'll charge admission. Yeah. We've got this covered, man. We'll, we'll figure this out. It sounds like some good money. It does. It sounds like just the next step from the poop on the wall is toilets off the roof. Yeah. Hey, you're right. Yeah, you you got to step it up, you know. We haven't, we, we haven't yeah. done it in a while because so we didn't know where to go from there. Yeah. You know I mean, and now we know. We were like thinking juggle shit, but that, you know, the, the trial runs were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, so, so yeah, now we've got, we've got a new thing, man. I'm ready. I'm so ready to go back on tour now. Let's go. We've got the next step ready to go. And <laughs> yeah, you guys got to get back out on tour so that and more of these crazy stories can happen. You guys can just have an amazing time once again. And again, hopefully when that tour comes around that you guys are planning on doing in fall of 2021, hopefully end up making your way around to the Milwaukee area so that we can actually make this happen. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. We love Wisconsin, man. We've been through Wisconsin yeah, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> Well, gentlemen, I usually say this closer to the end of the episode, but you know when I was talking about that rock fest thing where I had the promise of the first rounds on me for those bands that I was yeah, seeing? Yeah. Now, I always promise that to bands when I have an absolutely blast of time. Blast time. Well, that sounded bad. A blast of a time with them on the podcast, which usually happens every single time. And trust me, there is absolutely no exception to the rule here. So I'm going to extend it to you. The promise is when I get to see you guys perform live for the first time or when we get to throw toilets off the roof for the first time, the <laughs> first round is on me. Nice. Yeah. I like it. I like it. We will take you out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and remember, this is not in. This is not just me bl- trying to blow smoke up your ass. This is literally a promise, and I always plan to repay my debts. I like it. I like oh, it. Nice. Nice. So as we kind of bring this podcast to a close with all the shit, the stories, and <laughs> everything else that we talk about, which is just absolutely insane because of how many just crazy stories we shared. I always like to give you guys as artists a chance to say anything you guys want to say, plug whatever you want to plug towards the end of the episode. Just kind of, you know, whatever you want to say, the floor is yours. So take it away, guys. Uh, check us out on all social medias. Um, the website. Yeah, website, www.lydiacampery.com. And uh, we're going to be dropping new material every eight weeks pretty much. So uh, just stay with us. You know what I mean? We're going to be uh, – Trying to keep it, trying to keep that shit hot. You know what I mean? Like under tight, <laughs> nice. Nice. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're coming, we're coming for the industry's throat. Put it that way, dude. So, 
Fresh shit. Fresh shit. Every oh, eight man. weeks. Every <laughs> the next the next step is sheep shit. Sheep, sheep shit. shit. Sheep shit. <laughs> Not even ready. It's part yeah. two. Yeah. <laughs> part two. <laughs> Number two. Number perfect. Sheep shit the dry version. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> all righty guys well i always pull this podcast out with three certain things so this is one for the fans so you heard where you can find lydia camp reeve but i know what you're thinking why can't it just be convenient why can't i just have a place where i can see all the links to all their socials their youtube their website where i can buy some merch where i can stream all their music where i can pre-order anything that comes out with singles when i can download it and pay for it because we can support the artists that way or when tours end up coming back especially the second half of 2021 even though we're seeing a bunch of stuff announced and these guys announce stuff where can i you know know about this stuff can i just have a one place to just find all those links that i can follow them subscribe to them and just stream their music and listen to it well, yeah, I got you covered. Look at the description below for the podcast. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, I heard. You're going to see something that says, find Lydia Can't Breathe online, and you're going to see labels and links to everything for them. So you can like, share, subscribe, listen to their music, buy some merch, go catch a Do show it. when they're on tour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. And second off is, well, I already said it again. When I get to you guys perform live for the first time, first round's on me, and... Well, just let me know. I'll need to know, just need to know a little bit ahead of time so I can figure out how the hell we're going to get on top of that roof and we're going to throw toilets off of it. It's got to yeah, be a couple sir. days so we can make it work. We're, we're going to take you up on that. You may even regret this. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I regret being able to throw a toilet off a roof? You'll never regret it. No. Yeah. No. It's something, it's, something, <laughs> it's something I've known about for over a year. And every time I've done it, I've either been busy or I have been able to go and take part in it. But I'm like, damn, I really want to fucking do it. And my, yeah, I, it's a lot of fun. We're getting it done. Okay. Now it's time to get this shit done, literally. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, I cannot in good conscience end this podcast with goodbye because this was so much damn fun. I would love to have you guys back in the podcast again in the future oh, yeah. because I want to hear more wacky stories, talk more about your music with you guys. And well, goodbye seems too final, especially with the fact that we have plans to see you guys play live. I have to tap on my debt for first rounds on me, and we have to throw toilets off a fucking roof. I mean, come yes, on. Sir. It can't yeah. be a goodbye oh, at all. So we're going to end the podcast my thing I always end it with. See you guys later. See you later, buddy. Whoa, whoa, folks. This is my review with the guys from Lydia Can't Breathe. And yes, we had all four of them. That is freaking awesome. And I hope you guys like that promise I made for them. Throwing toilets off the roof of a warehouse. Alex, if you're listening to this, bud, which I hope you are, this will end up happening towards the fall. I will definitely be in conversation with you about this one because, you know me, I want to throw toilets off the roof, too. This band is hilarious. I'm pretty sure Gary will be down for it. But it is just one of the coolest things ever, man. And I cannot wait to meet these guys in person, pay up on my debts, make good on my promises, and get to know more about them. So please, please, please make sure you follow the band. All of their links to follow them on social media, subscribe to their stuff, like them, um, stay in touch with them, know when tour dates come out, buy some merch and stream their music. Everything's down below, along with everything that's MSOTD Rocks and the Core Progression Podcast, where you can follow along with us, subscribe to us. Everything is in the, the description of the podcast as well. And please remember to tell a friend, tell a family member, tell a musical community online about the podcast as well. Trust me, it helps us out a lot to get growing once again into the stratospheric sense. So hopefully when you hear Core Progression Podcast, it's on the same level as State of the Scene by the end of 2021. Let's make it happen, ladies and gentlemen. So on that note, that's going to be for me today, guys. Thank you for watching listening to the Core Progression Podcast with those who rock, rock and roll thrive. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I end every single one of the big, healthy, and hearty. See y'all! Yeah!